and welcome to the Fertility Conversations podcast. The goal of this podcast is to create more awareness about infertility and to provide support to people trying to conceive. Thank you for listening today, and we hope you will be encouraged. And now, here is your host, Ola. Welcome to another episode of Fertility Conversations. Today we are joined by Dr. Ugunkinle of uh, Origin Fertility. Origin Fertility is one of the leading IVF clinics in Nigeria. Dr. Ugunkinle joins us today to speak about fertility preservation and he will also be joining us in the future to speak about uh, other parts of fertility and infertility just to ensure that we are aware and educated about all that we need to know. So welcome doctor and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me on your program. Yay, thanks. Uh, so to start off, we usually say, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, okay. So like you rightly said, I'm Dr. Babachude Ogunkinle, a consultant, gynecologist, fertility specialist, and medical director at Origin Fertility. At Origin Fertility, we partner with couples to fulfill their dreams of becoming parents. We offer varieties of assisted reproductive technique, which includes intrauterine insemination, in vitro fertilization. We offer donor garment treatment, donor egg, donor sperm, embryo adoption. We also offer service the pre-implantation genetic testing for mm. aneuploidy or monogenic disorder. And we also offer crowd preservation services with freeze eggs, sperm, and embryos for future use. Origin Fertility is at Ikoyi in Lagos, Nigeria. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and I know that, again, we're speaking about the first part of our fertility preservation uh, session today. Um, and you're going to be educating us about the impact that age can have on our fertility. So for anyone listening, does age impact fertility for women only or both men and women? Well, I would say maybe age at some point in our life may become an adversary of both mm. men and women in the context of fertility. However, its effect is more pronounced on women compared with men. Effect of age shows earlier among women, and the is also more pronounced. Most women, the decline starts at the age of 35 years, while in men is between 40 and 45, and the decline is steeper in women. In women, the, the effect of age is um, can be broadly classified into ovarian-related effect which impacts on the egg quantity and quality, and also non-ovarian effect of the age on fertility of women. You know, women, a woman acquires all her eggs while in pregnancy. And this peaks between 18 and 22 weeks of pregnancy. So basically when, when they're in the womb? Yes, when they're in the womb, at that time, a woman will have about 6 million follicles. Now, follicles are free-filled structures in the ovary containing immature eggs. So indirectly, the number of follicles also uh, give us the number of eggs. By the time the woman is born, these follicles would have gone down to 1.2 million, about 1.2 million. So by the time a woman starts menstruating, they are between 250,000 and 450,000 follicles. Just as the quantity reduce, reduces, so is the quality. Oh. And all these together, they affect fertility of women. At some point in a in woman's life, ovulation becomes infrequent. Then the quality of eggs that are being produced are also not of uh, the top quality. And these are as a result of the chromosomal 
uh, abnormality. Most of the eggs may have uh, abnormal chromosome uh, constitution. Wow. What about the men? No, we're, we're still on the women. Oh, yeah? OK. <laughs> <laughs> we're, still, we're still on the women. Because of reduced quantity and also quality, uh, the ovulation is infrequent. Fertilization becomes difficult. Implantation may be challenged. Then the risk of miscarriage is also high. Now, when you're talking about then, you know, we're talking about live birth, healthy mother, healthy baby. Now, at some, imagine the effect of chromosomal anomaly when as related to the age of the woman. The incident, the Down syndrome is the commonest one among uh, life born. Now, the incidence of Down syndrome is about one in 1300 at the age of 20. And now you can follow the trend. About one in 950 when the woman is 30. One in 85 at 40. So compare just a matter of 10 years, 950 to 85, and one in 35 at the age of 45. You know, that's significant. Yeah. Now we are not talking about non-ovarian causes. You know, with ad uh, advancing age, the incidence of uh, conditions like fibroid endometriosis, either directly or indirectly through their treatment, also contributes to fertility. And there are some medical conditions like type 2 diabetes and thyroid uh, disorders that may increase the risk of miscarriage among women. So, but in men, now going, talking about men, men also have their age impacting on their fertility. But this, like I said earlier, this usually starts between 40 and 45 years. In men, what has been found is that the quality of sperm declines as well. Quality in terms of the sperm concentration, motility, and morphology of the sperm, and all these contribute together to affect the capacity to fertilize the woman's egg. And in men with advanced age, the incidence of erectile dysfunction also it grows in tandem with as he as the man grows older. Also, there is a reduced libido. All this will affect uh, sexual intercourse, meaning that the frequency of sexual intercourse will reduce. And if there is no sex, this can hardly be baby. So that is when one looks at it, you see that the age is a standalone factor that determines whether one becomes a genetic parent or not. Right. And nowadays, of course, people are spending more time studying, focusing on their careers. Things are a little different from when our parents were perhaps getting married in 18 or 20. Now we're spending more time studying, focusing on careers. So how are we balancing that fertility? As you've mentioned, that it reduces with age, but also trying to accomplish our career and educational goals. You see, while, while that is good, because I mean, when we focus on career, especially women, mm -hmm. that doing that puts us in a good uh, socioeconomic standing. Yes. Women who are career driven, they are wealthy, usually can afford to have good health. They can, they are in a position to increase their um, sphere of influence in mm -hmm. the society. <laughs> but there's a trade off. The trade off is difficulty in achieving conception. So many women may find out that they, at some point, they have involuntary childlessness because, I mean, they didn't plan for it. 
but is the is effect of age on them. Why focusing on career? I know the problem with age and the ovarian factor is silence. There's nothing to prompt the woman that look, the ovary is getting old and the air quality is dropping and the quantity is also reducing. There's nothing to prompt the woman because you just go about your normal business without any prompt. Mm -hmm. So, um, enlightened, high-profile women in the society, yes, they may have, they may very healthy to carry pregnancy, but the question is, would they be pregnant by the time they are ready to have a baby? Would they be able to achieve pregnancy because of the declining ovarian reserve and the, and the, the quality of the eggs that they may be producing at the time. Right. So, you know, it seems like, like you said, rightly you said, age plays a huge role and we need to be aware of that. Um, but I've also come across women, even in their 20s, who've advised that they were told that they had low ovarian reserve. So sometimes the decline can happen even at a younger age. So. Are there any factors or conditions that could speed up the decline in ovarian reserve? Yes, like you rightly put it, there's a condition that is called primary ovarian insufficiency. Now, yeah, primary ovarian insufficiency can result from either uh, some therapy administered by doctors. We will say, oh, is they are iatrogenic, meaning that it's caused by treatment directed at some conditions in which a woman who has cancer, most anti-cancer drugs, they are not friendly with the ovaries. Radiation therapy and ovaries are not French. Then even when uh, one performs surgery on the ovary, it depends on how much chunk of the ovarian tissue that has been removed. Then there are other conditions like um, autoimmune disorder for some reason the woman starts producing um, immune response against her ovary. So producing chemicals that will attack, that will attack her ovaries, the normal cells in the ovarian tissue, thereby destroying the normal. So that can lead to premature ovarian insufficiency. And by the time you do the normal testing, you say, oh, you have low ovarian reserve. And there's some viral uh, viruses like mumps, virus, and chickenpox, they can also affect the ovaries. Uh, but in many cases of this primary ovarian insufficiency, mm -hmm. we don't know the cause. So, so it, it just happened that, oh, you're in your 20s or late 20s or early 30s. I do ovarian reserve, uh, you check your ovarian reserve and find out that it's low and there is apparently no cause. And of course, there's, I forgot to mention that there are some genetic conditions, like uh, the very common one is the Turner syndrome, especially the mosaic, in which the woman can actually initiate, uh, go through the secondary sexual characteristic changes in women, start menstruating, but compared to her peers of the same age, her ovaries will just become rapidly old and there will be no eggs for fertility in future. And there's another condition that is called um, the fragile X syndrome, in which the, the one of the X chromosome is producing, is not producing the, some particular substance that is responsible for the stability of that chromosome. And that can also lead to a rapid decline in ovarian reserve. Thank you so much for sharing that, Doctor. So I know that today we're not speaking about, we're not really going into the further details of what we can do, but just as a brief, what do we do then? You know, we, we're studying more, we're spending more time building our career, we're trying to be independent women and successful, like you mentioned earlier. 
our men also are studying longer. So uh, just briefly for people listening, just to put it into context as part of this conversation before we wrap it up, what can we do? Are there any solutions or do we just all have to get married when we're younger? No, there are solutions now because the solution, um, the particular solution in which you can preserve your um, egg or your sperm for future use has been in existence for some time, but it was only applied to people who are undergoing therapy, medical conditions like uh, treating cancer, either in a man or a woman. At that point, they can preserve, they can preserve their eggs or sperm. But with recognition of um, age, how age impact on fertility now, people now plan to freeze their eggs. Right. So one is possible, and you know, before when we talk about that one is called either plan ovarian planned ovarian um, preservation or social egg freezing. Mm -hmm. In the past, when you mentioned social egg freezing, nobody is thinking of uh, career, women's rights. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the stigma that oh, okay, it's because she doesn't have a partner. That's why she's freezing her eggs. But people can choose with the reproductive right now. They can choose when how and when not to have a child. So this with um, improvement in technology in terms of freezing and the recovery of eggs. So it's possible to freeze eggs for future fertility. That's great. And this is also the same for sperm? It's the same for sperm. The same for sperm. Okay. That's good to know. At least, so at least there is there's something. There's an option. Um, Man. Even if you're in a stable relationship and you are not interested in getting pregnant just yet, mm -hmm. you can freeze your embryo, meaning that, I mean, an egg that has been fertilized by, uh, with the sperm and watch to grow for some days before freezing. Okay, so that's good to know. And I would really be looking forward to us having that conversation subsequent to this one today to focus a lot more on the fertility preservation so that way we know what to do and how to approach it and where to go uh, if yes. you're thinking about that. And uh, just to confirm for fertility preservation, people in Nigeria, and what about people from abroad? Can they also come to your clinic to freeze their sperm or eggs? Yes, they can. Okay. No, no, we accept everybody once you meet the once you meet the condition for freezing because the idea is also to guide you and uh, so that you'll be able to make an informed uh, choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds great. And uh, just before we wrap up, uh, I mean, this has really been really informative because I think it's just important that people are actually educated and aware about this because. Again, we go about thinking that uh, our fertility is always going to be perfect. We talk about our mothers that had children. You know, people will always say, I had my mom had a child or my auntie had a child at 40 or 45 or even 50, you know? So I think we, <laughs> <laughs> so I think we go around thinking that. Uh, yeah, that fertility, that, fat that our capacity to, uh, to be able to produce, to reproduce is. Uh, yeah. Forever that is timeless. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's timeless too. Yeah. So no. it's 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 important that we know that and our the younger generation are also aware. Yeah, it's almost I mean with with advancing age is almost certain that one will become infertile. Wow. Good to know. And I'm sure people listening are also very happy to be able to at least be aware of that information. That way they can make informed decisions. Yeah. So for anyone listening and wanting to contact you, what's the best way to reach you at uh, Origin Fertility? No, we have a website. And we have, um, yeah, on the website, all the contact details. Okay. All right. So I'll yeah. put the website on the link as well. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And as a wrap-up, Doctor... 
Is there any other information you'd like to provide to us today? No, I think our next episode will dig more into fertility preservation, especially uh, among women, mm -hmm. because they need to know a lot about it. Yes. And the reason is that they need to be able to decide because, I mean, we can view fertility preservation as a fail-safe insurance, but it is not. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to look at it from the point of age, looking at it from the financial point of view and what is best approach. Right. How many eggs should one freeze? What is the optimum age in terms of cost benefit? Right. Okay. Sounds amazing. And I'll definitely be looking forward to that. And I'm sure our listeners would also be looking forward to that. Um, sure. But this has been an amazing um, session with you today, Doctor. And I really appreciate you taking out of your busy schedule to speak to us. Um, it is so important that we are aware about our fertility and knowing that infertility is rising globally. It is very important that we know how age impacts our fertility and the options that are available to us. So that way we can make decisions based on information and education that we have and to hopefully preserve our, our fertility for the future. So thank you so much for today and for informing us. And we really look forward to our next session where we go into further discussion about fertility preservation and how people should proceed uh, when considering that. So thank you so much, Dr. Ogunkini. And thank you for having me. Thank you. And we look forward to our next session. Sure. Thanks for joining us this week on the Fertility Conversations podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star rating and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Fertility Conversations. If there are any topics you would like to have discussed, please send an email to fertilityconversations at gmail.com. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode. Thank you again for listening. Take care of yourself and do stay hopeful.